Welcome to Whores Talk Horror. We're not really whores. We just like wordplay. Hey everyone, Sharon here. I just wanted to say we actually recorded this episode a few weeks ago before we were all quarantined and I just wanted to add this little uh, intro because there's actually mention of a pangolin in this episode, which at the time when we recorded, we had no idea what a pangolin was. Um, But now because of the coronavirus, I think everyone in the world knows what a pangolin is because the coronavirus may have been started by one. So anyways, I just wanted to throw that little tidbit in there. So we just wanted to say that we hope you're all staying safe and staying healthy. On to the episode. Welcome to Horse Talk Horror. I'm Sharon. I'm Melinda. And if you have been listening to us since the very, very beginning and you heard our introduction episode way back in the day, you may know that the idea for our podcast kind of evolved out of an original idea where we thought it might be fun to watch Lifetime movies and rip on it and basically record us making fun of Lifetime movies. But we um, finally actually started (laughs) watching Lifetime movies and we're ready to have our first Lifetime episode where we review these horrible, horrible, the the best of the worst Lifetime movies in our own uh, Sharon and Mindy fashion. And since this is a horror podcast, after all, what's scarier than a Lifetime movie, really? A bad Lifetime movie. Oh, boy. This movie is called Mother May I Sleep with Danger? Actually, that's a there's a question mark there after is. that. So, Mother May I Sleep with Danger? This is the 1996 movie, which stars Tori Spelling, who is best known for being the face of nepotism <laughs> and also for Beverly Hills 90210. And it also stars Ivan Sergei. And you may know him from the hit movie, Jewtopia, <laughs> the romantic comedy about a Gentile who pretends to be Jewish in order to win the affection of his love interest, starring Tom Arnold and Jennifer Love Hewitt. And no, we are not joking. That we, it's an actual movie. We should actually watch that one next, maybe. Yeah, I don't know if we'll talk about it on the show, but I, I'm a little curious. I'm not going to lie. Right. Um, so basically, the plot of this movie... Uh, It's about a girl named Laurel, who is played by Tori Spelling. She has the boyfriend of her dreams, Kevin, played by Ivan. He can and will do anything for her. He is totally devoted to her, but the downside is that he never leaves her alone. (laughs) When she tries to get some distance, he responds with aggression. It finally dawns on Laurel that he is not good for her. Laurel's mother, Jessica, is starting to suspect that something is wrong with uh, her daughter's new boyfriend Hmm. we just want to put out there that obviously this is a serious subject domestic abuse is not a joke but this movie is absolutely absurd (laughs) it's horribly written and even more horribly acted and we're just gonna be making fun of the movie and not the subject matter right yeah and there's a lot to make fun of mindy do you have any fun facts about this movie before we dive into the plot well much to our surprise um Tori Spelling actually made another movie with the exact same title in 2016 with James Franco about (laughs) a college girl who introduces her mother to her girlfriend, who happens to be a vampire. Um, Apparently, the only similarity between the two movies besides the name is that Tori Spelling and Ivan, how did you say his name? Sir? Sergei, uh, Sergey, Sergey. They they both happen to be in both movies. Um, also, even though they are in the movie poster, I guess neither Spelling nor Franco are in the movie for very long. So interesting. It's but, the classic lesbian vampire story. That old trope that's been done a million times. I, know. I just can't believe there's another movie <laughs> with her and with this title. Yeah. Uh, what other fun facts are there, Sharon? Well, during the er- early stages of filming. Um, Mother May I Sleep With Danger, the one that we are going to be talking about, not the lesbian vampire (laughs) flick. Um, Tori Spellen was bitten quite severely by a tame pangolin. Is that how you say it, Spencer? Yeah, I think so. It's basically a mammal that looks like a scaly anteater. They're the only mammal with scales. They're actually kind of cute. What the fuck? So look look it up. Maybe we'll post a picture of a pangolin. (laughs) 
<laughs> on Instagram. I they guess they are so cute, they especially are. when they're wa- when they walk on their hind legs and they're like holding something in their hands. Yeah, I have look it up. them up. I, I will do that myself. Actually, <laughs> apparently, it was being used while shooting uh, a film or TV show on another set um, <laughs> that was next to where they were filming this movie. Uh, so basically. Yeah, I'm not I'm not really sure <laughs> how it ended up attacking Tori Spelling, but in certain scenes you can see bruising from her rabies inoculations. So, oh my god, that is so bizarre. I don't know if I'm curious enough to see that to rewatch this movie. I know I am not. <laughs> But I'm sure the makeup person was actually kind of excited about that because then they didn't have to like do extra bruising makeup on her. I wonder if there's any behind the scenes footage of her getting attacked by <laughs> this pangolin. I don't know if there were uh, cell phones recording video as uh, much as that. That's yeah, true. That's, this is true. This is 96 b- before before everyone had a camera on their phone. Yeah. We were still in pager territory a wah, little bit. Wah. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> I can visualize it. Oh, I can too. All right. And it's so so random. (laughs) I'm sorry. It's so funny and random. Anyway. All right. So we need to let you know that if you would like to watch this movie, you can watch it on YouTube. Uh, It was free. And I'm not really sure why. But during the entire movie, all the voices were sped up. So basically... Every character, especially all the female characters, sounded like munchkins from The Wizard of Oz. And I highly recommend, if you are going to watch this movie, that you watch it in this fashion. Because it was it made it a lot more enjoyable, I think, than it might have been otherwise. Yeah, they pitched all the voices up, everything yeah, up, so they wouldn't everything. get hit with copyright issues. Oh, is that why? Yeah. Interesting. But it's hilarious. And I don't think that copyright issues will be an issue for this movie, but I could be wrong. Who knows? It was pretty funny. Yeah. Mother... Mother, may I sleep with danger? (laughs) No, bitch. (laughs) So the movie starts off with the character Billy. He's played by the the Sergei guy, uh, Ivan Sergei. And him and his girlfriend are in his girlfriend's kitchen arguing because he caught her cheating on him with a guy named Kevin Shane. And all of a sudden, he kills her with a cutting board. Bam, bitch. <laughs> Straight up kills her with a, a fancy ass cutting board. She's dead. He cleans up the mess and disposes of her body. But you know what? I honestly think that I, I hadn't thought about this till just now, but this movie maybe gets a little bit of a credit for originality because I don't know that I've seen Death by Cutting Board before. That is a good point. Yeah, I hadn't thought of that till just now. But the movie goes from like zero to 100. Yeah. Like right away. Just like Billy's rage. <laughs> So after Billy murders his girlfriend with a cutting board, (laughs) we're introduced to the character Laurel, played by Tori Spelling. She starts dating Billy, whose name is now Kevin. Mm -hmm. We will refer to him as Billy Kevin. Kevin Billy. Yep. And as she points out to her mom before introducing Kevin or Billy Kevin, she says, he's great and he's not in a band. It should be said that like this is not the first non sequitur that will pop up in this movie and then go nowhere. So hang on, folks. There's more coming. <laughs> so Billy, Billy, Billy Kevin, Billy Kevin, I like he, that. <laughs> Billy Kevin shows up to this motel where the real Kevin is. Uh, he basically murders him and steals his identity and he kills the real Kevin in his motel room in broad daylight Mm -hmm. takes his dead lifeless body out of the hotel room. I assume puts it into the trunk of the car once again in broad daylight without anyone seeing is able to burn all of Kevin's belongings in a bonfire on the beach at night where you could anyway, I was literally like, okay, somebody would see that fire. Why is no, it like bothered me that nobody saw the fire. (laughs) Somebody would. And yeah, he was also able to drive Kevin's Jeep up to the beach and yeah. drive it off a cliff. Once again, no one noticed any of this. He wasn't wearing gloves. I mean, there's probably fingerprints and DNA everywhere. Yeah. This never, ever gets brought up again. Tire tracks leading into the water. Yeah. Not suspicious at all. Not at all. So he- did this happen before 
we meet Tori Spelling and her dating? Well, no. theoretically, I think it did, but they showed it to us later. Oh, okay. Oh, it was yeah. like a flashback. Right. Well, sort of, but they didn't make that very clear. There's no concept of time in Lifetime movies, so right. we don't really know. But they, in terms of when they show it, it was in the movie, she, we've already met gotcha. Tori Spelling, yeah. So she had no connection to the real Kevin? Nope. No. No. For so, all we know, Kevin was maybe an orphan. <laughs> <laughs> who had no family oh his family maybe died oh let's let's put let's hang let's hold that thought for a second and keep going we'll come back to the family thing but yeah so maybe the real life kevin was an orphan and had no family no one would come looking for him and billy kevin knew that maybe billy kevin killed his parents too maybe that's why he was i mean he was a good target so we don't, we don't really know. We're we're making a lot of assumptions here. We will be making a lot of other assumptions <laughs> <laughs> along the way because this movie leaves a lot to the imagination because it doesn't go into much detail. Details don't matter. No, not in Lifetime movies. <laughs> Details do not matter. Time does not matter. That's their tagline. Of Lifetime? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the details don't matter. <laughs> so after Billy Kevin disposes of the real Kevin gets gets him out of the way takes his identity and him and Laurel are dating for just a short amount of time Laurel invites Kevin over to meet her mother where we find out what happened to Kevin's family and this is a direct quote from the movie Kevin tells Laurel in one scene that he lost his parents in a helicopter skiing accident in Austria they died doing what they loved so maybe Billy actually killed Kevin's parents and then killed Kevin. What? Ooh. Was he the helicopter? F- that maybe he was. <laughs> was the helicopter pilot. <laughs> In Austria. This was actually told to Laurel's mom, a.k.a. the mother from the title, um, after a very awkward, and this is another air quote, homemade dinner that Laurel's mom fucking catered in, literally. Um, anyway, after dinner, Laurel's mom tries to get to know Kevin, which is, again, awkward. Uh, but mom does mention to Kevin that her friend, Dr. Zola, is involved in the med program in which Kevin is currently enrolled. Kevin visibly flinches when mom says Dr. Zola. Mm. Can we get back to the helicopter skiing accident? <laughs> Were they skiing out of a helicopter <laughs> in Austria where they like was the helicopter on skis going down oh that's a good visual. the mountain <laughs> please d- do you have any any theories of uh how a helicopter skiing accident in Austria killed his parents and it said they died doing what they loved well so it was a fake story were they so <laughs> Shh. spoilers Mindy <laughs> No, this whole this. Oh, by the way, this whole thing is just all spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a little late, but yes. If you haven't noticed by now, we are telling you almost every major plot point of the movie. This will contain many, many spoilers. <laughs> we probably should have said that at the beginning. So we know that Kevin's parents are dead, or at least he says that they're dead. And then the next day after he has this wonderful um, homemade catered dinner, <laughs> Uh, at the home of Laurel's mom's house, uh, Kevin and Laurel are walking through the quad and he asks Laurel about her parents and how come she never talks about her father, to which she responds with, I'm going to do this in her um, <laughs> Tori Spelling munchkin voice. After they got divorced, two years later, he died. All right, let's take a listen to the actual clip of this so you can all kind of get an understanding of just how munchkiny Tori Tori's voice sounds. After they divorced, two years later he died. That was it. Full stop. Full stop. What happened in between? After they got divorced, two years later he died. That's like saying after I graduated high school, fifty years later I retired. <laughs> <laughs> Like, you're missing a few details there. Like, back up. (laughs) (laughs) And she seems really awkward about it, too. And then that's a detail that's, like, never brought up again. But, like, clearly there was some sort of angst. And she doesn't go, but she doesn't go into it. And they don't talk about it. So, okay. Thanks for telling us, Tori. (laughs) (laughs) So, after she gives Kevin 
Kevin, uh, Kevin Billy. Billy Kevin. Billy Kevin. Billy Kevin. Uh, she follows up that confusing answer with another gem. <laughs> she hugs Kevin and says, And you will protect me from anyone and everything forever, right? Ah, bonding over <laughs> dead parents. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just, I just, it cracks me up that she just says that and they never get back to it. It's like, Tyler Durden, this conversation is over. (laughs) Uh, Laurel comes home late one night from studying or jogging or who the fuck cares and sees Kevin outside her dorm who's demanding to know where she was, blah, 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 blah. She says she has to go turn in and we'll talk to him tomorrow. But he, like a good boyfriend, follows her into the dorm, into her room and proceeds to yell at Laurel about how she needs to be available literally 24-7 for him to reach her. After about 10, 15 minutes of arguing, he finally leaves. And here's the kicker. Her fucking roommates emerge frightfully from the bathroom. They'd been in the bathroom the entire time, heard him yelling at her. And instead of coming out and trying to help her or call for help, they fucking hid in the bathroom. Yay, sisterhood, bitches. (laughs) Jesus. Yeah, (laughs) I'm I'm pretty sure that if I had a roommate and heard her boyfriend like come into the room and just start like yelling at her and I would probably come out and like, do you need a little help, a little backup, anything? Are are we okay here? Yeah, totally. Totally. And there was multiple girls in the room. Yeah, I was like, how many roommates do you have? Because they were all all, there's like three of them that come out of the bathroom. (laughs) Well, I think it was like a, you know, a dorm situation, like community bathroom, but. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, party in the bathroom, but Laurel and Kevin aren't invited. (laughs) Um, So at one point after the big argument or right after or who cares, uh, the point is while suggesting Laurel dye her hair blonde and cut it short. Oh, because Tori Spelling is a redhead. Oh, yes. In this movie with long. Yeah. She's got long red hair. Um, And so he is like they're on the beach and I don't even know what they're doing. But he's like, you should cut your your hair short and dye it blonde just like his ex who he fucking killed in the opening scene with a cutting board and when she's like oh i don't remember what she said like oh you take good care of me or something like that and he was like i just want to keep your body perfect which ew Ew. yeah i I just had to throw that line in there because it grossed me out also at one point uh laurel is at a birthday what does her body have to do with her hair your guess is as good as mine honestly (laughs) um or was he trying to say like well okay fine if you don't want to cut your hair and dye it as long as you keep your body perfect (laughs) i don't i honestly it was disjointed it didn't make sense and like most of this movie so i whatever i just went with it what is your take on this how are you feeling about billy kevin (laughs) (laughs) i don't like this guy (laughs) yeah he kind of sucks um Oh, it, at one point, Laurel is at a birthday party for her grandma, but ignores her mom's he's creepy warnings and talks to her beloved Kevin while her family celebrates in the background. And this is like five minutes. Like the time is not like the span of time is not well thought out in this movie or portrayed or because I feel like they like fight five minutes later. They're like, I, I feel love like, you. I feel like that. Uh, since we've been watching a few Lifetime movies, I feel like time isn't important in a Lifetime movie. <laughs> okay, good point. I, I I feel like, you know... Maybe the sh- channel should just be called Life. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, very good. Life movies, because they're so realistic. They are. And then actually, uh, at t- speaking of this birthday party she was at, it's for the grandma's 80th birthday party, and there were like for real 80 fucking candles on the damn cake. And at this point, Sharon just turns to me and goes, she's going to die blowing the candles out. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't, but that was the most shocking thing about this movie. That would have made the movie a little bit more interesting. <laughs> <laughs> That would be a twist. <laughs> Grandma dies, blowing out the candles, and the movie just takes an entirely different turn. And now <laughs> the other 60 minutes is just dealing with the death of the grandma. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been better. <laughs> so maybe just a few weeks after dating Again, Kevin. time doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Kevin asked Laurel to move in with him because, you know, it's been a few weeks now. They're in college. Right. It's time to take the next steps before they graduate and ha- have jobs and, you know, get out in the real world. Guess where he wants to move? 
Where, Sharon? A cabin in the motherfucking woods. Oh, what a great idea. Nothing bad ever happens there. Nothing ever happens in cabins in wooded areas. (laughs) So she thinks that maybe things are moving just a little too fast. So she declines. And Kevin's response is, um, actually, Spencer, would you like to read Kevin's response? I think we need a a guy <laughs> a guy here to uh to read Kevin's lines. Kevin's response is, take it, Spencer. You don't want me to go climb a tower with a gun, do you? That's with his <laughs> high pitched voice. <laughs> no, no, no. Can you do like a more uh, masculine munchkin? <laughs> I don't think he had a southern I accent think... either. That wasn't southern. Sounds I think a little ma- southern. Masculine munchkin seems a uh, paradoxical. <laughs> you don't want me to go climb a tower with a gun, do you? <laughs> I don't know what wow. the hell that was. Kind of sounded like what it sounded like. <laughs> you don't want me to go climb a tower with a gun, do you? That's that definitely more southern. I, yeah, I was gonna say. I don't. I didn't watch the movie. I don't know what he sounds like. You don't have to. It doesn't matter. All right. All right. I'll just do it in my normal voice. You don't want me to go climb a tower with a gun, do you? I'm not really feeling it from you. You have to um, imagine that you might lose the love of your life, What's my motivation? Your motivation (laughs) is that you do not want anyone else to have this woman. You want to control her. You want to put her in a cabin in the woods and never (laughs) let her. Her go. I don't know anything about that. (laughs) And if you can't have her, you will kill everyone who gets in your way. Now, Spencer, what is this line? One more time. You don't want me to go climb a tower with a gun, do you? All right. So I think we need to actually play the clip of this just to compare how good Spencer did at his acting, but also... I just think everyone needs to hear how ridiculous this dialogue is. <laughs> you don't want me to go climb a tower with a gun, or do you? Perfectly normal response. No red flags here. <laughs> well done, Spencer, though. That was very good. Woo-hoo! Thank you. And the Oscar goes to... <laughs> <laughs> right? Exactly. Kevin Billy Ivan. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, Sharon also pointed out that Kevin has this finger twitching thing that he starts doing when he starts freaking out. Just had We have to mention that. Oh, that's a good acting choice. <laughs> <laughs> so meanwhile laurel's mom is not digging her daughter's new boyfriend for many many reasons uh basically he made her dye her hair from red to blonde things are moving just way too fast so at least someone's noticing the red flags here so laurel's mom starts doing her own digging yay she goes to <laughs> kevin's old apartment in colorado which is where he bludgeoned his first girlfriend <laughs> With a cutting board. With a cutting board. Uh, The rest of the story takes place in Washington. And she sees Kevin's old apartment, which is completely empty, except there just so happens to be a big old Oscar the Grouch style garbage can right outside of his front door. Like in the hallway. In the hallway. I think his like front door is even like propped open. But it's been like weeks since he left. Right. So I'm not sure why a garbage can of his stuff is just still sitting in the hallway outside of his apartment. (laughs) <laughs> and conveniently sitting right on top of the garbage can is an eight by ten photo of Kevin's ex girlfriend, like fucking glamour shots style photograph. Yep. Just sitting right on top for Laurel's mom to see. And later, Laurel's mom goes to the police department to get some more intel on her daughter's boyfriend and happens to see a missing persons poster and starts putting the pieces together. Oh, on the missing person's poster, I should probably mention this, this is kind of important, is his ex-girlfriend. Right. Dun, because dun, dun. Seriously, worst stalker ever. <laughs> like, just leaves a picture of his ex, who, again, he murdered with a cutting board. I can't get over that detail. Just right on top of the trash can, amateur hour, people. But... You know what? It's a good thing he was so stupid. And it's a good thing that his landlord is lazy. (laughs) Very lax. Yes, apparently. Just let the garbage sit out in the hallway for like three weeks to a month. Could have been a year. Who knows? As we said, Lifetime movies, no concept of time. (laughs) Or life. Or life. (laughs) Or real life situations. What's the what should be the new name of Lifetime? I like. Well, no, you're right. Life doesn't totally work. If No, this is all ridiculous. That should be the title. (laughs) This is all ridiculous. 
uh, Lifetime, if you're listening, can you please consider changing your name to This Is All Ridiculous? We Love know it. it is already. This is all ridiculous. Just admit it. Yeah. Let's open a bottle of wine. Yeah. I mean. The artist formerly known as Lifetime. <laughs> I'm for it. I think we should start a um, a petition. Yeah, I agree. All right. So we'll, <laughs> we'll put a link to our petition. <laughs> in our uh episode info <laughs> i think we need a website and with a website we need squarespace <laughs> very good very good hey we're not getting paid by squarespace <laughs> not yet we could be <laughs> the, no free advertising yet <laughs> all right so laurel's mom flies back to washington tracks down her daughter and goes to rescue her because she's a good mom well now might be a good time to point out that at one point laurel does visit her mom and her mom has a bomb ass rooftop garden attached to her fancy high rise apartment. Just saying. And in Seattle, like that would cost a lot of fucking money. Yeah, but now if she held on in this, if this f- fictitious character held on to that <laughs> property from 1996, holy shit, that property values in the Seattle area yeah. are like one of the highest in the country now. She is sitting pretty. <laughs> I think she kind of already was sitting pretty, but like, but seriously, she really probably be... like quadrupled her uh, property value. Yeah, totally. on a, a rooftop garden in Seattle, shit, that's got to be at least like two and a half million dollars Jesus. for a place like that. Um, all right, where were we? Okay, so during all this time where uh, Laurel's mom's like flying to Colorado and and talking to the cops and figures out what exactly is going on laurel pretty much figures out that by now her boyfriend billy kevin (laughs) is nuts and breaks up with him for is this like the second time they break up uh i don't know this is the first big time though like i think she's like really kind of like no i I really want to break this off yeah she's like no we are done we're we're cutting this off for good and i think this is this is where she goes dancing at the coyote bar with this character I call Scooter Boy, and that's boy spelled B O I, because of course it is. Um, he's just this dude that liked her at the beginning of the movie, but she turned him down for her dreamboat Kevin, Billy Kevin. At the bar, they're they're going. They do a shot where they like pan past the billboard, and on the billboard, uh, there's a band playing, and it's very cleverly named, rhymes with orange. That's my favorite fucking band. Don't, I like that. Don't like make that fun name. of Rhymes with Orange. <laughs> um, naturally, Kevin follows Laurel to the bar, uh, is jealous of Scooter Boy, and proceeds to follow him into the bathroom where he apparently beats the shit out of him in the urinal. As Sharon questioned, did he beat him up with his dick out? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it was more like, did he just beat him up with his <laughs> dick out? Yeah. That's like... That's a fucking cheap move. Yeah, it really was. Like, wait for him to put his dick cheap. back in his pants before yeah. you sucker punch him. Yeah. Laurel sees an enraged Kevin freak out on some dudes in the street, finally decides enough is enough and goes to the cops. Just kidding. She goes back to the fucking cabin to get the rest of her shit, where Kevin proceeds to offer a toast with a half a bottle of wine that's open. And he that he like brought out of the house randomly because surely that's not drugged. That's not weird. Well, I think it was a half full bottle of wine because he poured the two glasses of wine. Oh, okay, maybe. But I still was I was skeptical. Well, yeah. If your your psycho boyfriend like offers that you actually your psycho ex boyfriend that you just just dumped that you watched like beat up a couple of guys outside of a bar and has been making you change your appearance and is just talking all kinds of crazy shit and doesn't want to let you out of his sight offers you alcohol yeah (laughs) little suspicious so you know he tries to give her this glass of wine but laurel gets in the car and drives away before he can nope she drinks the fucking wine and gets woozy which brings us to uh somehow her ending up in a different cabin in the woods (laughs) that her family owns the family cabin was mentioned briefly earlier in the film but how kevin knew where to find it you know what we're we're thinking way too hard about this well billy kevin is a stalker so (laughs) i'm sure he did his research and yeah maybe she mentioned it to him 
briefly off screen off screen (laughs) i want to know if they did that because of some behind the scenes like filmmaking reason that they like couldn't use the one cabin so they had to move to this other cabin or something they had to move it because Uh. tori spelling got bit by that thing (laughs) (laughs) so they went to another cabin that was less bitey because there was a rabbit rabid pangolin pangolin (laughs) running around the first cabin attacking tori Seriously, that that transition, I was I think I was doing work while you guys were watching and that tra- I think I noticed that and, and didn't she even say like how did you find the cabin or how did you know about the how did you take me you're like I don't know. I don't know but it, it was not explained. <laughs> the second cabin was much nicer. It was. And it actually had well we'll get get into it but there is um a really cool feature to this cabin which I kind of want in my house. Um Yeah. So yeah, he, he he brings her to her family's cabin, and then does he drug her again? Uh, maybe. I don't know. But it, she is drugged, and she figures that out, obviously. But she wakes up, and she plans her escape, and while he's outside, I think she um, wakes up and locks the door, and every single window oh, right. has these like shutters on the inside that close but there's like a little teeny like yes gap in them so like in the center there's like a little like square lookout so she like puts these shutters on all the windows so he can't break the windows and they're like hardcore wooden yeah like shutters too like that was really cool actually i do remember that now that was so yeah, she locks up all the windows so he can't get in, but she can still see out of them. So yeah. she can kind of see like where he is outside it's the like cabin. It's like the first smart thing she does in this entire movie. <laughs> and then because she's a runner, she opens up the back door yeah. and she starts running through the woods and ends up at this lake. And you know what? Boat chase! <laughs> So there's the yeah, big chase scene at the end of the movie that involves her running through the woods. She jumps into a canoe and she starts to row away from her psycho boyfriend. And then all of a sudden, he fucking pulls a Jason Voorhees from Friday the 13th Part 1 and jumps out of the water from fucking nowhere and just grabs her out of the canoe, pulls her into the lake. Didn't I'll- they say he was a champion swimmer? Was he? Underwater swimmer? I don't know. <laughs> Didn't they say he was a big fan of Friday the 13th? And Well, also, it's pretty clear that Tori Spelling has no fucking idea how to row a boat. I mean, I don't either, but bitch, you're an actress. YouTube that shit or something. Well, I there guess was, was no YouTube back then. Yeah, good point. <laughs> but anyway, it doesn't matter because... Because Laurel, after she gets pulled into the water, she swims back to the dock and sees her mom... I'm not really sure how her mom figured out that she was at oh, this family cabin. That's what happened... And I paused here because I was like, the logic of this makes no sense. But he stole, he, after he drugged her in their cabin in the woods, (laughs) he got in her car and then called the, the towing company and used her mom's like towing. Cause the mom made a comment earlier about how like the, how Laurel's like on her like towing insurance or some shit or AAA or whatever. And so when he had the, he called the towing company and then that's how I think that's how he got the address yeah, I, yeah. I think I remember seeing that but that's that. a r- long roundabout way of being like where do you where's your cabin I guess they couldn't really think of a better way for Laurel's mom to get to the cabin in the woods so then that's how she found out because the her Laurel's mom's car actually did stall out or whatever and then yeah. when she called AAA, didn't one of them run over the the spiky things and the t- that was the mom that was the mom yeah, uh, yeah. And that's when, when she called the tow truck and yes. i think that's when she found out that a tow truck had been already called for the other right they the guy was like oh we just serviced somebody and then when right. he told her where she knew it was close she to made the- she finally yeah. put it all together yeah thank thanks you. spencer thanks spencer yeah we actually both paid attention <laughs> we could- <laughs> that's like the only part i saw i think <laughs> i guess i saw it for a reason so i could help in that moment there we see go. So, yeah, her mom luckily ran over some spiky things in the road. Otherwise, she might not have found her daughter. Uh, So, you know, they start hugging on the dock. And all of a sudden, Kevin appears with an axe in his hand. Not sure where he got the axe. Maybe he found it in the bottom of the lake. (laughs) Where Jason dropped it. Where Jason was, like, sitting there, like, because he was chained to the bottom of the lake. That's from number six. Was that number six? I just listened to the How Did This Get Made episode about that one, yeah. Okay, now... I think it was that one. I kind of want to watch that movie now. Well, you kind of need to watch 
all <laughs> the Friday the 13th movies in order like we did. I think we left off at eight. eight. I think was the last so one. So we have like, yes. what, three more to go? Two, two or three, yeah. Oh my God. But that sounds amazing. I think three more to go, including Freddy versus Jason. Maybe, yeah. I just have this image of, of Kevin in the water and Jason being like, need this waving the little <laughs> axe and he takes it and then swims back up to get He's like Corey. thanks bro <laughs> wait does this all take place at crystal lake it, it looks like it it kind could of. although this we know it takes place on the opposite side of the country but so crystal lake say, is in the pacific wait no nope atlantic northeast shut up <laughs> <laughs> i don't remember anyways neither here nor there Jason Voorhees gave Kevin an axe. <laughs> Fact. We, we've deduced. Yeah, we're going with that. We've deduced this. Um, and Laurel does what any good daughter would do when her axe-wielding boyfriend starts threatening her and her mom. She pushes her mom in front of her, hides behind her, and screams, No, Kevin, no! She's the one! She's the one who lied! She's the one who wanted to break us up! Look! I believe in you. I'm the one who made the mistake. I'm so sorry. (laughs) Luckily, though, it was all a ruse to gain his trust. And he fucking bought it. And she just ends up pushing her mom out of the way before her mom gets an axe to the chest. (laughs) Thank God. (laughs) But the look on her mom's face was priceless. (laughs) When she started doing that, her mom was like, are you fucking serious? (laughs) So Laurel hits Kevin with an oar that. Oh, right. Would just happen to be like laying there, you know. All these weapons I, are just like laying around. I think the boat maybe drifted back to the dock, sort of. I don't know. But she didn't pick it up out of the boat. They Doesn't were like matter. on the yeah, whatever. <laughs> she got an oar. She hits him with the oar. He falls into the lake. Obviously, one blow to the back with an oar will kill you. <laughs> <laughs> so of course they think he's dead. Cue the size of relief, the mother daughter hug, and he's gone. It's over. It's over. Oh my god, that's hilarious. I I apologize to everyone now for my Tory spelling munchkin voice. That is pretty much what it sounded like. But oh, it, you, you shouldn't apologize. It pretty much did sound like that the entire movie. Um. So now we're just gonna cut to cheesy '90s music. And who knows how much time later? Because yeah. why, Mindy? Doesn't matter. Because time does not matter in lifetime movies. We see two girls walking across their college campus, and one girl asks her friend if she's going tonight. Her friend tells her no. She has a date with Preston. Mm. Preston walks up to his girlfriend and kisses her, and when we tur- when he turns around, we see it's Kevin with a wavy, dark brown, shitty-looking wig <laughs> and a leather jacket. The cycle continues. And all I can say, <laughs> I was trying to think of like his wig and like what type of hairstyle that was the only thing i can think of and this is a very old reference so a lot of you might not know what i'm talking about just look it up joey lawrence from blossom (laughs) that's what that's what his wig looked like that's what his wig looked like it totally did would be like joey lawrence from blossom it was just so bad and fake looking and yeah whoa whoa Uh. all right so now that we've dissected the plot appropriately (laughs) uh we're gonna move on to our favorite quotes of the movie mindy what was your favorite quote honestly my very favorite was when i don't see you i bleed to death oh my god from kevin billy kevin billy kevin what about you billy kevin preston that's disgusting oh yeah except i have a friend named preston so that bothers me i don't want to well actually i don't Kevin too. If what Spencer ever said, about? "When I don't see you, I bleed to death," you would you would be the happiest girl on earth. <laughs> I would be like, "Shut the fuck up, you freak." <laughs> That's weird. Why would you say that? <laughs> that is quite a statement. <laughs> Do you want me to? What, what was it? Do you want me to get on a tower with a gun or something? What the fuck? Oh well, that was another. Yeah, I mean, there is a lot of really really good quotes in this movie. So I think my favorite quote maybe from Billy Kevin right before he kills his first girlfriend, Aaron, he says, but Aaron, if you don't love me, why would you make love to me? (laughs) And then he's like, bitch, (laughs) (laughs) cutting board to the head. Um, And then at one point it's mentioned that Tori's 
Car- Laurel, sorry, not Tori, Laurel, uh, was going to go to like China or some shit because she's a communications major, I think. Mm-hmm. I don't know. But yeah. of course, that those plans get abandoned because, you know, Cabin in the Woods. Um, but when she's talking to Wait, Kevin. Wait, did you say Cabin in the Woods or Kevin in the Woods? Both, actually. Yeah. Um, and she, when she tells Kevin about her trip, he says, what's the point of studying languages when people have a communicate, have communication troubles? What's the point of studying <laughs> languages when people have communication troubles? <laughs> Can we just think about that for, like, for a quick second? I, that's why I had a hard time even saying it because I couldn't. Let's take a moment of silence for language. <laughs> <laughs> Spencer, what do you what do you think about that statement? I am flabbergasted by, I don't know, is it, were the writers just not good or were they just trying to make him sound like an idiot or both? (laughs) Yes. (laughs) All the above. I mean, is, is that his way of like smoothly trying to talk her out of traveling? I think it was. By being like, what? What's the point of even doing that when people have communication troubles? And he was he saying that like, probably they were having communication troubles at that point. I don't, I don't really remember when he, he probably said that. also believes the statement though <laughs> that he said. But he, yes, I think he wa- he didn't want her yeah. to go anywhere. He yeah. obviously has trouble communicating. <laughs> I mean, yeah, with yeah, yeah, with lines like, "When I don't see you, I bleed to death." <laughs> Ugh. All right, so this movie has a 4.9 rating on IMDb. Yeah. Oh, no, it's got a 5.0 now. Shut up. Oh, someone must have. (laughs) Between then and now, somebody actually rated it. Was it one of you? No, I swear to God. I wouldn't do that. Somebody bumped it up. Uh Uh-oh. Wow. Okay, so this movie now has a uh, 5.0 rating on IMDb. Um, Out of a scale of 1 to 5, I'm going to give this... 2.5 2.5 glasses of rosé. Um, drugged rosé? Drugged rosé. And it gets the extra half a glass because having all the characters sound like munchkins actually made the movie a little bit better. Yeah, <laughs> totally. I agree. I what, agree. what would you... Uh, how many glasses of rosé all day would you... I hadn't actually thought about it, but I'm, I would go with probably two. A two? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. So are you comparing this to all Lifetime movies or just movies in general? Is that your oh. rating scale? Mm. I think uh, I'm just rating it on itself. I'm, I'm not, rating it I'm on a... I'm not thinking uh, of anything else, really. I think my rating is going to be on a Lifetime scale rating system because, honestly, you can't really... Well, first of it's all... It's hard to compare these movies to yeah. other movies. You know what? I might have to change this because if IMDb is rating this out of a scale of... Uh, zero oh you can't do a zero on imdb it's mm. it's one one to ten right all right so i'm gonna have to change my scale to a uh, a one to ten scale to well you can just cut the numbers in half i guess but i guess it's easier if we're gonna compare it to imdb i'll give it a um a four point no 3.5 4.5 is too high i'm gonna stick with two at a, a scale of one to ten. Yeah. Now? Okay. Yeah. No, it's a horrible, horrible movie. <laughs> a two is very generous. So. <laughs> so Sharon, you're giving it a three point five out of ten. I'm giving it a three point five out of ten. Which only... equates to one point seven five out of five. Oh my god, this is way too complicated. You and guys. you're giving it a two. <laughs> Mindy is. You're giving it a two out of ten. Yeah. So that's a one out of five. All right. We don't need the math equations here. Yes, you do. Spencer. Anyway, move on. So now that we've rated this. Now we're going to give our uh, our movie tally. So this movie contains 12 episodes of Rage by Kevin. So Mindy, do you want to give us uh, the the uh, specific moments of Kevin's rage? This is actually a list of uh, the victims that fell prey to Kevin's rage. <laughs> um, starting with the cutting board. R.I.P. cutting board. That's right. <laughs> uh, Aaron Meadows, his first girlfriend. Aaron's kitchen. Someone's rando scooter in the coyote bar parking lot that he just like shoves over in one scene for no apparent reason. Uh, scooter boy, or maybe just his nuts. I don't think he actually died, but his nuts no. probably did. He didn't kill him. Um, the outdoor grill slash dinner area at the log cabin. Uh, the wine and dinner in front of the fire at the log cabin, but that was kind of sex related, so I don't know if that counts. Uh, some rando dudes on the sidewalk outside of Coyote Bar that accidentally bumped into him. 
uh, the real Kevin and his car, the air. There was an angry air punch at one point. <laughs> um, the window of a rando car at mom's cabin and mom's cabin's front door. Because I think he really like slammed that thing in. He really likes to hit things. <laughs> That is the actual moral of this whole story is he really likes to hit things. What's the total body count? Surprisingly, it's only two. Yeah. There are only two actual deaths in this movie, which um, I mean, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't need to see more carnage. <gasps> would, would your rating be higher if there were more deaths? Maybe. So wait, is it? So it was the original Kevin and Aaron? Yeah. Yep. And yeah. the cutting board. And the cutting board. <laughs> uh there is one death by cutting board, which we've mentioned before, but we put it on our, our tally. And then always the rookie mistake at the end of the movie, uh, after the boat scene showdown, I guess you'd call it. Remember, folks, just because he fell in the water and didn't resurface that you saw anyway, that does not mean he's dead. Don't go celebrating and hugging and crying and shit until you kill the fucker. Dead. Never assume they're drown- they've drowned. So to recap... 12 scenes of rage, two bodies dead, one death by cutting board, and a rookie mistake. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize for my singing. Uh, also, Tori's supposed to be a runner in this movie, but she's definitely an arm flailer when she runs. She runs like Phoebe. I just got to <laughs> say it. Maybe not quite as bad as Phoebe <laughs> from Friends, but yeah. Although, yeah, Mindy... You're not a runner either, so <laughs> you're not a runner, you're not a rower, but you're a shit talker. <laughs> I, that's damn damn straight, baby. <laughs> well, all right. So o- overall, mother, may I sleep with danger? No, bitch, you really shouldn't. <laughs> Do you recommend people watch this? I recommend people watch every Lifetime movie. <laughs> I recommend they find it on YouTube and watch it. Like the helium inhaled version, just that we for the saw. Munchkin voices. Yeah, because yeah. that was really funny. I agree. So, yeah, this was our uh, first lifetime recap, and we will be doing more of these in the future. Yep, more to come. We have already watched a couple of gems <laughs> that we're excited to talk about for the podcast. We watched them not for fun. Shut up. <laughs> Everyone watches Lifetime movies for fun. Absolutely. (laughs) And Mindy? Thanks for listening, everybody. Uh, Subscribe to our Patreon if you want to have early access to episodes, hear exclusive episodes, and receive cool gifts. All the cool kids are doing it, so you should too. Um, If you go to horrors.talkhorror on Instagram, uh, you will find the links to our streaming locations and our Patreon account. Uh, Be sure to check us out on social media, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and email us at whorestalkhorror at gmail.com if you want to tell us a ghost story, something creepy, or just to say you love us because we love you too. And also, if you have any recommendations of Lifetime movies that we need to watch, let us know because there is a lot out there. There really are. And it's it's hard to make a decision on what we should watch and what could be skipped. So please give us your suggestions. Yeah. We would very much appreciate that. (laughs) Um, And as always, thanks thanks for for getting getting creepy creepy with us. Sharon, you want a beer? Uh, Oh, my God.